Premier Pro for Beginners Top 10 Tips You know so many people teach themselves video editing on Premiere Pro without any formal training and they often get into bad habits wasting so much time simply because they didn't know some great efficiency features in the software. So here are our 10 quick top tips to make you a faster video editor. And please check out the link below for a free downloadable PDF, more information, no email needed, or check out our comprehensive beginner to pro course on Premiere Pro. And the link for that is again below. One, auto frame size. First of all, when you've got a project using footage from different cameras with different specifications, even different frame sizes, here's a great time saver, even experienced editors I know we're not aware of. This is a full HD 1920 by 1080 timeline. Most of my project has HD footage to use, great, but somebody sent me 4K footage that doesn't fit, and I've even got given tiny 720 HD footage. What are we, animals? Of course I could right click on each individual clip and choose set to frame size every time, but let Premiere Pro do it automatically. Before you import any clips, and it's important that you do this or it won't work, go to Edit on Windows, Premiere Pro on Mac, then Preferences, Media, Default Media Scaling. Now the default is off. You need to choose set to frame size. You can click scale to frame size instead, but it's not the same thing and can lead to resolution issues if you're not careful. Now, all your footage when it's imported, as long as it's the same aspect ratio, will fill the frame size of your sequence. Bingo! Tip 2. Give yourself room to work efficiently. If you can connect two monitors to your computer, extend, not duplicate, your monitor output, then click the little hamburger menu on the program monitor and drag it to fill its own monitor giving you space on your main monitor for the other windows. But if you have only one monitor, did you know you can temporarily make any panel in Premiere Pro full screen? Just mouse over the panel you want to expand and click the Grave Accent key. It's usually top left next to number one. Whoa, look at that, eh? Hey, let the dog see the rabbit as we say here, hey? Click Grave again to go back to normal. You can do this on the project menu and you can easily see all the useful metadata at a glance. Now, if your keyboard hasn't got a Grave Accent key, double click on the panel name title you want to expand. Three, moving, cutting and copying. Do you still click here for the main selection tool or here for the razor blade to cut clips? Please, just think resume, or as we say in England, CV to remember it. The C key is for the cut, the razor blade, and the V key is for the main selection tool. But why even click V and then mouse to click on the clip that's currently playing? If the timeline is on a clip you want to highlight and work on, just click D for it's done. Now for cutting, if you don't want to cut using the razor blade and you prefer to cut where the playhead is, you may prefer to click Command or Control plus K to cut. It's up to you. Okay, copying clips. Surely you don't highlight the clip. Copy it into RAM by clicking Command or Control plus the key C, then change the target track if necessary, then find where you're going to drop it, and then click Command or Control plus V. Tell me you don't. Please tell me you don't. Doing all that palaver takes at least 10 seconds. Look, simply holding Alt down and dragging copies the clip in a second. Just think of all the time you've wasted over the years. 4. Fine tuning clips. While you're in the V mode and you have a clip selected, use the left and right arrow keys to move the playhead one frame left or right. Now, if you use these same arrow keys and hold the Alt key down at the same time, you move the actual clip a frame at a time. Okay, hold shift down for moving five frames at a time. Or still holding the Alt key, you can move a selected clip up or down the tracks with the arrow up and arrow down buttons. Cool. Five, fast viewing each clip. Let go of the old key and with the blue selection box on the track you want to move on, use arrow up to move accurately to the next edit point to see what the next clip is and arrow down to go exactly to the previous edit point. So useful and time saving. Six, quick reveal in source monitor. Now say you've got a clip on the timeline and you want another bit from the same clip, the same file from the camera. Right, where is it located in the project panel? 
right, this is what you have to do. You highlight the clip in the timeline, you right click it, you click reveal in project, then select the source monitor, then you drag the selected clip to that monitor and then you choose, no, 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 you don't want to do that. You simply highlight the clip and click F. Your clip reveals itself automatically in the automatically open source monitor for you to select another part you need. Easy. 7. Turbo Ripple Delete Now I bet you're always trimming rubbish off the beginning and ends of clips. You cut, you highlight, you click the delete key and then you pull back the stuff manually on the right or, or right click in the gap and select ripple delete to make good, don't you? But why do you do that? Look, you just put your playhead where you want to cut out the material to the left and press the Q key. If it's at the end of a clip, it's W. Easy peasy, it's ripple delete heaven. Now, if you want to cut out a section in the middle of a clip or sequence and make good, and you don't want to muck about with razor blades, just select I for the in point, O for the out point, and click this, the extract edit button. The rubbish is gone, everything closes up again automatically. So many editors don't use this very useful button, the extract edit button, it's so useful. Now, if it's a whole highlighted clip you want to get rid of and close the gap, it's Shift plus Delete. Simples. 8. Power Zoom Now, who uses the fiddly-widdly silly zoom tool hidden away under the hand tool? I mean, you can hardly find it in the first place. Nobody. Because, of course, you use the far faster equals and minus keys on your keyboard to zoom in and out of your timeline, don't you? But honestly, you'd be even faster if you hold the Alt key down while using the scroll wheel on your mouse. Just get used to this and it'll honestly really speed up your editing. 9. Effects Multi-Copy If you've got loads of effects on one clip and now you've got the daunting task of having to add all these effects to many others in your sequence, don't do them individually. Simply copy the clip with all the effects on. Then highlight the clips you need to paste the effects on and go to Edit and click Paste Attributes. Then you can select what effects get pasted on all your clips at once. If you want more, well forget that, just click OK. Job done, coffee break. 10. Simplify, dude! Finally, if you're working on a very simple piece of hacking together work or you're setting up a computer for maybe a newbie editor, create a simplified workspace just for that type of work. Just close all the panels you know you won't need and you won't get distracted by them either. Down in the bottom left panel, all you need for simple projects is project and effects. Close everything else. Once it's simplified down, save this layout for future use by choosing Window Workspaces, then Save as New Workspace and call it Simplified Panels or whatever. You can easily open new panels again or open the original workspace. In fact, I've got a whole load of different custom workspaces I've got optimized for widescreen, optimized for vertical phone videos, dual monitor, and so on. Hey, check out our comprehensive course on Premiere Pro on the link below that will take you from total beginner to pro with 40 HD video lessons over eight hours covering all you need to know about the pro. Please subscribe to our channel. Thanks very much for watching. I hope these tips have been useful. Happy editing.